I'm Dr. Teresa Bullard, and this is Mystery Teachings. Could our universe be just one in a vast sea of the multiverse? If so, how does it have any bearing on our lives? In this episode, we begin to grasp our infinity and discover ways to actualize more of our full human potential. Scientists and science fiction writers alike love to toy with the ideas of multiverses and parallel realities. But usually when they do, they invoke it as a way to explain away the anthropic principle, namely that our universe is fine-tuned for life, as if by design. Or alternatively, to eliminate the quantum interpretation of a participatory universe, meaning that we have a role to play in creating this universe. Often when we hear scientists or media reporting on mysterious topics, especially ones that are gaining a lot of attention or that seem to be paranormal, they like to use this phrase, mystery solved. Is it really? Or is that just a way to get people to think that there is no mystery? Science has solved it so we can stop wondering, stop asking questions, stop believing in higher powers or aliens or whatever mystery, and just go back to life as usual. Perhaps we might want to all be wary of this phrase, mystery solved. Life is one big mystery. Our universe is an even bigger one. And the biggest mystery of all is us. Who are we? What is our potential? Exploring the mysteries is what brings meaning and curiosity and a desire to seek more knowledge so that we can grow from it. Rather than trying to explain away the mystery, let's embrace it. Let's welcome a bit more magic and mystery into our lives. When we do, life becomes a lot more exciting and interesting. That is why this series is called Mystery Teachings. And that is also why mystery schools are called mystery schools. Rather than trying to explain away the mystery or hide the mystery as some suspect, it's about exploring the mysteries of life the universe, the soul, the nature of spirit, and of the self. Despite the way that scientists interpret this idea of a multiverse, it too is a mystery worth exploring. Why? Well, because it helps us to touch infinity and expand our mind to remember who we are as eternal beings. Metaphysics also works with the ideas of multiverses and parallel realities, while still including consciousness and spirit as vital ingredients. Let's explore what both science and metaphysics have to say on these ideas and how they can be used in a way that actually empowers our lives in the here and now. We've learned that string theory provides some exciting and beautiful possibilities for discovering a unified theory of everything. And string theory is what has opened the door to the multiverse idea in science. How did it do that? Well, it goes back to the issue that string theorists are grappling with, the challenge of identifying the exact geometry of the superstrings and extra dimensions hidden within our universe. They have many candidate shapes allowed by the math, over 10 to the power 500 possibilities, which is a massive number. Each geometry theoretically corresponding to its own universe with a different set of physical laws and tuning. But rather than saying there can be only one right answer, resulting in only one universe, namely ours, string theorists have instead proposed that all of these possibilities are equally probable and likely exist somewhere within a multiverse, meaning there are at least 10 to the power 500 differently tuned universes out there in the multiverse, maybe even infinite numbers. But this part, where they say they are all equally probable and all exist, this is the part where some scientists then claim that this means that there is nothing special about the fine-tuning of our universe. We simply find these sets of parameters in our universe because we can only exist in a universe that is fine-tuned for life. But there are many other types of universes in the multiverse. We are just one possibility in an infinite sea Nothing special, therefore, mystery solved. Or not. Really, all of this is speculation based on assumptions, not evidence. How about we explore another perspective? What does metaphysics say about this? 
Well, to answer that, let's first take a look at Hermetic teachings. In the Hermetic teachings on the principle of mentalism, which says the all is mind, the universe is mental, it later goes on to say that the all creates universes in its own mentality. And there are millions of millions of such universes in existence within the infinite mind of the all. There it is. Hermeticists have been talking about the idea of a multiverse long before modern scientists. But they conceive that this multiverse is within the infinite mind of the all. They then go on to say that you are dwelling in the infinite mind of the all, and your possibilities and opportunities are infinite, both in time and space. In other words, we are evolving within the all, and there are infinite possibilities and ways in which we can evolve in our journey through eternity. Rather than rob us of the spirit or divine source, the hermetic approach to the multiverse empowers us to realize our infinite possibilities and eternal being. Is that it? Or is there more to be gained from the metaphysical perspective? In Mystery School Kabbalah, we explore the concept of the multiverse as well. And we use it to expand our consciousness to touch infinity. For example, we explore the Kabbalistic concept of Ensof, the infinite source that is without end. Ensof is that source of will that initiates the Big Bang of creation of our universe. How does Ensof do this? Well, first of all, Ensof being truly infinite is beyond our universe, which means that Ensof's home is the multiverse or the infinite sea of universes. One version of the story says that the infinite mind of Ensof devised a plan to manifest a universe that was conducive to life consciousness and its progression, one in which eternal spirits could come into and inhabit to express and thrive in as living beings. And to create this universe, Ensof summoned 144,000 rays from the multiverse. Each of these rays carried different ingredients or aspects that could fulfill parts of the plan. Ensof, as a source that creates universes, had already created other universes within the multiverse. But each universe has different components, different laws and tuning. And to create this new universe, Ensof needed a specific set of ingredients, or we could say information, or even better would be to say a specific set of blueprints that were needed to succeed at fulfilling this plan. Each ray holds a blueprint. To get the right blueprints that would work, Ensof first sent out 144,000 feelers or messengers out into the multiverse, and their mission was to scan, communicate, and gain insight from amongst the trillions of universes and possibilities to figure out what works. As these messengers went out all over, they then each returned with one ray or blueprint that would work. As 144,000 rays with the correct blueprints then came back together, they collided into one point that collision resulted in what we now call the Big Bang. That place where these 144,000 rays united is what we call the Great Central Sun, which is like one central mainframe that holds all the blueprints. From there, the 144,000 rays are then sent out into the logos of the newly created and expanding universe. Each ray holds the blueprint for a different density level. There is a master observing or overseeing each ray with a host of angelic beings to support them in now carrying out the blueprints and manifesting the plan. It's a cool story, but what does it reveal to us? Kabbalah is saying that there are 144,000 density levels on the vibrational spectrum between the great central sun or origin and us here in the physical. 144,000 is regarded as a very magical and sacred number in Kabbalah. There are all kinds of numerological reasons for why, but for now, let's stay with this story and what else it reveals. According to Kabbalah, this physical density is the densest level, the 144,000th ray. That obviously then also tells us that within each density level or ray, there are sub-levels as well. 
We know from science that in the physical, we have a full spectrum of vibrational energies that we can interact with, such as light, sound, materia. All of this that we can detect in the physical is part of the sub-levels of the 144,000th ray or density level. Remember that string theory says there's just one string with a particular geometry whose vibrations manifest all the different particles, forces, energies that make up the physical universe we know. Kabbalah is saying the same thing, but it calls that string a ray, and in particular, it is the 144,000th ray. What does this also imply then? Well, it says that our universe is not just physical. Within our universe, there are 144,000 density levels, with this physical level being just one of them, the last one. Not only are there many places within our physical universe to explore and learn from besides Earth, there are also many levels beyond this physical density to learn and grow from. And that is just within this universe. Beyond this universe, there is an infinite multiverse to also explore. So now, why are we so stuck on this idea that we can only learn and grow in this physical density of Earth? As the Hermeticists say, our possibilities and opportunities are infinite. The only thing that limits us is our mind. Our mind, our concepts, our thoughts create our reality, meaning the box we put ourselves in. By stretching our mind and our concepts out to touch infinity and consider all these other possibilities and opportunities, we can free ourselves from limited thinking and limited ways of being. We can realize that this life in this universe offers us a smorgasbord of opportunity. And that is the purpose of this universe. That was Ensof's plan. That is why our universe is so finely tuned for life and consciousness to evolve and progress in it, even in ways beyond what this physical realm can offer us. With this expanded awareness of the possibilities that lie before us, we can hopefully let go of getting so caught up in the drama and minutia of the human game. We can hopefully remember our eternal being because we too came from the multiverse. We are some of the spirits that Ansoth planned this universe for so that we could inhabit it and express ourselves at all the density levels, not just the 144,000th level. This level is the densest as the light from source flows down from the highest vibrational level of the great central sun to us here in this physical density matrix, its vibration gets slowed down. And what does that mean? It means that this vibrational level of matter is the bottom speed of light and is therefore the furthest away from the source that we can get. That is why it is so hard being physical. And that is why this reality is not the true reality, because it is so filtered and distorted by the low vibrations of this physicality. But at the same time, we are here to experience this density, to learn to manifest at this density and find joy in living here as well. Realize too that our spirit has already traveled and explored through all the higher density levels while en route from the multiverse to the great central sun, out through the logos, across the cosmos, and after eons of time, we are now here exploring this physical life on Earth. Our spirit has been on a cosmic journey through eternity, and this physical life is just our final pit stop before we begin the journey home. This physical life is but the blink of an eye compared to our spirit's eternal life. How's that for beginning to grasp our infinity? Some people may get a bit overwhelmed with this idea of how much more there is beyond this physical life to learn and grow through. But usually when that happens, it's because we're projecting our pain, our fears and attachments from this life onto those other realms. But have no fear, it's only up from here. Once we transition out of this physical density, we then begin the journey back towards higher vibrations of light and things get better, less veiled or filtered, more true to who we really are. 
And why do we come into this density at all if we have so many other levels to learn and grow from? Well, in short, we're here in training. We are here exploring all these levels in order to evolve and transform into something more than just pure formless spirit. We are here to actualize our potential. Mystery School teachings say that we are here to learn to become creators so that we can contribute to this grand symphony of creation. And here, at this physical density of the 144,000th ray, is where we learn to manifest. This density level of the physical is where the pure spirit potential can have its ultimate expression. To do so, we need to learn how to harness the subrays of this density. How do we do that? Where do we begin? We begin with ourselves because we are the key. All these rays and subrays funnel down into us. They form our blueprints encoded within our DNA. They form every atom and subatomic particle of our bodies because we are the microcosm of the macrocosm. Not only do we have all the physical ingredients within our body, we also have all the various energy levels that connect us to the higher rays, such as our chakras, our aura, our etheric field, our soul, our astral dimensions, and more. All the powers of the universe are within us, just waiting for us to learn to tap into them. So we start with ourselves and just being aware of the greater potential that is available within us. This is why above the doors to the ancient mystery schools were written the words Temet Noske, or thine own self thou must know. In other words, know thyself. Then as we enter through those doors, we gain greater access to the deeper mysteries and learning tools and methods for harnessing the keys within us. What tools and methods? Well, there are many because we are multidimensional and different methods help us access different levels and dimensions of our being. Meditation is, of course, an important tool, as is the right use of toning or chanting words of power. Ancient mystery school traditions also hand down rituals we can use to harness the rays of creation and various energy body activation methods that empower and awaken us to more of our greater potential. Building our chi or life force energy is also important. Prayer is good for maintaining an open and clear connection to spirit. An initiation in an authentic lineage is a spiritual technology for catalyzing and accelerating our progression. Yet the place where we must do the most work is on our mind and soul. Not only by quieting the mind through meditation, but actually reprogramming it to eliminate the subconscious backlog and all the limiting beliefs and ego attachments from various indoctrinations or early traumas. Now, in saying this, we're not just talking about reprogramming through psychology or hypnosis or talk therapy or other such techniques. Those can be useful tools in the right context and with the right practitioner. But what we are talking about here is alchemically transmuting the blockages and raising vibration from ego to spirit. It is a process of spiritual alchemy and alchemy is both an art and a science, meaning there is a formula to it, a step-by-step -step process and precise art that we learn to harness so that we can speed up our progress. And the best system I know of for doing that at an accelerated rate is a combination of ascending the tree of life through universal Kabbalah and being on a path of initiation in an authentic mystery school lineage. How so? Well, Kabbalah gives us this map called the Tree of Life, as well as a vast system of awakening and understanding ourselves to repattern our mind and soul using that map. And the reason it is so powerful is that the Tree of Life is the very structure of our DNA blueprints, of how our mind works, as well as of the rays themselves. When we work with this geometry, we are in essence using the multidimensional communication system that directly connects into our DNA and to the rays of creation. 
To get a sense of this, let's dig in a bit deeper into the mystery teachings of Kabbalah and take a look at how the rays of Ensof are structured, remembering also that these rays are similar to the concept of superstrings. Could Kabbalah provide further insight into string theory and the geometry of strings? Let's find out. Now, the source of these insights comes from an expert on metaphysics, Kabbalah, and quantum reality, Frater Goodney Goodnison, who is a master initiate and key holder in the lineage of King Solomon. I really have to credit him here because the most mind-blowing teachings I've ever learned on my path have come through him. Where do we start in understanding the structure of the rays? At the top, of course. If we were to unfold a ray and look down the primary axis from above, we would see that each ray has five parts, arranged kind of like a medicine wheel or equal arm cross with four quarters surrounding the center, which is the fifth part. What's fascinating is that so many ancient spiritual traditions around the world have some kind of symbol that uses the same arrangement. So all 144,000 rays have these five parts, which brings the total to 720,000 sub-rays. What Kabbalah reveals to us is that this arrangement is the axial view of the three-dimensional tree of life. The tree of life is thought to be the master blueprint or DNA of everything, from the cosmos to our mind to our physical bodies and biological DNA. When we look at the tree of life from the side view, we see that not only is each ray made of five parts or sub-rays, which here become the five pillars, we also see that each of those five parts has several levels to them. On the two-dimensional view of the tree, there are 10 plus one spheres if we count the hidden one called Da'at. But on the three-dimensional view, there are a total of 16 plus one spheres, including Da'at. Then, in addition to the spheres, are the paths that connect the spheres. So we can begin to see that there is an intricate structure here. What if we considered each sphere to be akin to the process of space being braided up into a quantum loop, as is proposed in loop quantum gravity, while each path is a string as seen in string theory, and around each of those are wrapped the membranes from M-theory? akin to how the myelin sheath wraps around our nerves. Then, similar to the way our DNA twists into a helical structure, and then is from there curled and folded up to form the chromosomes, could we imagine this foundational structure of the three-dimensional tree of life as the inner structure of the rays from Ensop, then curling and folding in upon itself to form what scientists are now calling superstrings in hyperspace. And through all of this structure flows information from source. And as that information passes through each part of each ray, it is set to vibrate and move at different frequencies, all governed by this geometric structure and all together creating a complex symphony of creation. This is then happening fractally within every atom of our body, within every cell as our DNA, within our central nervous system as the structures of our nerves and spine, within our body as a whole and how our energy fields flow and so on from the microcosm to the macrocosm. And even though this physical density is created by just the final ray, all the higher rays flow down into this final density this is why this physical matrix is the best place to learn to harness all the rays, because they are all here. This is also why in Kabbalah we say the kingdom of spirit can be embodied in the flesh. So all these 720,000 sub-rays that flow into us are the integration points that we have to work with here. How do we work with them? Well, to begin working with them is simple. It starts with just being aware of them. Just be aware that there are 720,000 access points to infinity right here. Next, we must move beyond just awareness into action. What kind of action? Well, any action is good so long as we are learning and progressing from it. 
But there are certain kinds of actions that will also help us access that full potential faster, especially actions that bring us into greater coherence, which we've mentioned before. Now, let's approach the same idea from a new and more expanded perspective. This approach relates to our multidimensionality and coming into awareness of parallel realities. What's meant by parallel realities? How are they different from alternate universes within the multiverse mentioned earlier? Well, to answer that, let's return to some science and then compare it again with metaphysics. In quantum physics, while scientists all agree on the experimental results and findings, what they don't agree on is the interpretation or more philosophical implications of quantum theory. For the last hundred years, the most widely accepted approach to quantum mechanics was called the Copenhagen interpretation of Niels Bohr, Werner Heisenberg, and colleagues. It says that of the many possible realities that could exist, only one actually exists in the physical, and that one is the one we choose to observe. In other words, it says that observation creates reality by collapsing the waveform. This implies that the universe is participatory and requires a conscious observer at some point. But in more recent years, many physicists have started gravitating towards alternate interpretations known as decoherence and many worlds. One of the primary reasons for this shift in interpretation is that materialists don't like the philosophical implications of the observer effect or a participatory universe. Why? because it opens the door to consciousness and a spiritual source. What approach then do the many worlds and decoherence interpretations take? How are they different? Now, well, decoherence says that interactions from even the slightest disturbance in the outer world environment can disrupt the wave function and cause it to decohere or split into two distinctive waves. So rather than an observer collapsing the wave function and forcing it to take on one possibility, this says the environment, such as interaction with a molecule of air or a cosmic ray, is all that's needed to collapse the wave function. This interpretation alone, however, does not account for all the quantum phenomena we see. Now, the many worlds interpretation then takes it further and says that both or all possible realities physically exist, but at each quantum juncture, a single reality splits into multiple parallel realities, meaning there is no wave function collapse. Instead, this gives rise to a never-ending sequence of the physical universe splitting itself into parallel realities and therefore creating infinite parallel universes. Now, physicists claim that these parallel realities are not imaginary. They are real, concrete, and objective. And our parallel self in one of these alternate parallel realities would equally argue that theirs is the real thing. What this is implying is that either there is no choice, or rather all choices are made, each in a different parallel reality, and thus the concept of free will is an illusion. Even stranger is that it says that all these parallel realities coexist with us in the same space and time. They're just existing on slightly different frequency levels of energy, which is just a thin membrane separating them. But scientists say that because these parallel realities have decohered, we can no longer interact with them. We don't see them for a similar reason to why we don't hear all radio stations being broadcast at once because we're only tuned in to one frequency station. Has science fiction become science fact? Maybe, although the verdict is still out on this one, because again, it is all conjecture. And as one of the granddaddies of quantum physics, John Wheeler, has said about the many worlds and decoherence interpretations, it requires too much excess baggage. Even if it is true, it still isn't sufficient to explain away consciousness and spirit. Metaphysics also works with the idea of parallel realities, while still including consciousness and our participation into the bigger picture. And within such a framework, there is a purpose to fulfill. That purpose is to first become aware and then to restore coherence by our use of will 
and consciousness and taking the right actions. How does this work from the metaphysical perspective then? Well, the science of Universal Kabbalah limits the number of parallel realities we might be in based on the pattern of the Tree of Life. Rather than a potentially infinite number, as in the Many Worlds interpretation, Kabbalah organizes them into 22 pathways on the Tree of Life. These 22 pathways define the archetypes of life or the ways of living life. Have you ever wished there could be two or more versions of you to accomplish all you want to do in life? Or that you could have become somebody different? Well, Kabbalah says we have 22 distinct parallel realities or versions of ourself in this physical world. They are 22 different aspects of our total self, each one being very different and living out its own physical life. In each one of them, the brain and the nervous system are programmed differently, giving us 22 unique perspectives and experiences of life and how things are. Altogether, they cover everything we need to learn in this physical life. Now, science often uses the terms of parallel universe and parallel reality as referring to the same thing. It all exists as different universes in the multiverse. But in Kabbalah, these terms are used differently. Realities are the ones we are consciously connected to and aware of. So the question in Kabbalah becomes how many of the 22 parallel worlds are we actually living on a conscious level? Becoming conscious of all 22 aspects of the self is what we strive towards. How is that possible? To get a better sense of this, we can use an analogy of a cineplex. Think of each life as being one of 22 different movies, or perhaps holograms playing in a grand cineplex. From the perspective of each life playing out in one of the theaters, there's only one script and set of actors encountered. And while our consciousness is focused in on that one theater, then all we are aware of is that one movie or reality. But from the perspective of our spirit or true self, it is in the center of the cineplex or a central viewing room that can see all 22 movies simultaneously. Our goal is to get our conscious awareness to the center where our spirit resides rather than having it dispersed through the 22 theaters. This would equate with fully realizing and awakening to our spirit's multidimensional existence. When we consciously achieve this oneness with our spirit, then the 22 distinct movies merge into one movie and we live all 22 archetypes of life in a single physical reality. Another way of saying this is that we bring our 22 parallel realities back into coherence and reunite them. How do we do that? Well, by becoming aware of them, by awakening to our multidimensional being. One tool we have for this that gives us a window into each of these 22 archetypal lives is the 22 major arcana of the tarot. When we study the 22 archetypes of the major arcana, not as a method of divination, but as a window into the self, we can become more aware of those 22 lives our spirit is experiencing. We can ask, who would I be in this archetypal life or that one? What would I be doing? How might my experiences and perceptions be different in each life? We are connected to all of them already through the higher consciousness of our spirit. So first we become aware of them. Then we start to merge them into this life by putting on those hats, so to speak, and trying them out in this life. Be the fool, be the magician, be the high priestess, be the lovers, be strength, be temperance, be the world, and so on. As we awaken all 22 archetypes in this life, then the 22 movies become one movie, one unified and full life. Once we've merged all 22, then what? Is that it? No, we are eternal beings on an evolutionary journey. After successfully completing each step on our journey, then we spiral up to the next higher octave of our evolution. Once we unify and assimilate all 22 archetypes of the physical life, our reality then splits or decoheres again, 
but this time it becomes 72 parallel aspects of our soul's evolution. So we move beyond the physical into the levels of soul and continue evolving by learning to integrate a new set of expanded archetypes. As we successfully merge those 72 archetypes of the soul into one whole, then we spiral up again and our parallel realities now split into 144 archetypes of spirit. Then we begin the evolution of merging these into one, and so on, out into our eternal being in the infinite multiverse. By becoming aware of our multidimensionality and the parallel realities of our human potential, we begin to touch infinity and find our way back to reuniting with our eternal being. Our purpose through all of this is to first become aware and then to restore coherence by our use of will or consciousness and taking the right actions. With each cycle of our evolutionary journey, we learn to play more musical compositions in the grand symphony of creation. We learn to use new instruments and techniques. We evolve, transform, and grow. And hopefully, by the time our spirit returns to the multiverse, we have added some new notes to the symphony of possibilities. Join me again as we explore other forms of life in our universe and beyond. I'm Dr. Teresa Bullard. Thank you for exploring the mysteries of the universe with me in this episode of Mystery Teachings.